thinking of building a new PC, a gaming PC or workstation? Then there's some things to consider coming up next on Deus Tech Tips. So first things first, planning. If you maybe someone wants to set a budget for your PC, maybe £200, £300, £1,000, then do that to begin with. The second thing to do is think, what are you going to use it for? If you're going to use a PC for surfing the internet, processing Word documents, typing your letter, that sort of thing, you're really not going to need a strong PC with lots of memory and lots of uh, processing power. However, if you want a gaming computer, you're going to need something with a bit more power, a bit more oomph behind it, and probably better class components inside. So how do you know what components go with what? The best thing to do is find a hardware selling website. We can recommend a few in the show links below. Then go on their website and have a look at what processors sell, what motherboards they sell, and you'll be able to match up the numbers, like the Intel processors uh, socket would be 1150, and you'll be able to match up a motherboard that goes with that. The motherboard will then tell you the memory you need, it will say either DDR3, DDR4, and then the speed it supports. It will also tell you what other interfaces it supports, like SATA to connect your hard drives to, M.2 to connect the latest fastest memory stick to, and what graphics card speed it supplies. We're going to say in this video that we're building a gaming PC, as that's what we wanted to build here. But we also wanted something that, to do a bit of processing work in the background and still be able to cope with uh, a bit more than the average computer. So we have set our budget at £1,200. Now through the planning processing for this computer we've upped the budget to £2,000. Um, it wasn't practical to get the best components that we wanted to do the jobs that we wanted for that price. That said this PC will last us some time and will continue to work for us in the future. If your budget isn't that high, you don't have to go that high. We've spent nearly £600 on just the graphics card. So, if you want to cut back a little bit, you honestly don't need half the things we're going to put into this computer. If you want a decent gaming computer though, then you want to look at at least an Intel Core i5 processor. We went with the Core i7 because then it gives us the extra power and grunt uh, to process videos and other things in the background. The first thing to consider is what processor you're going to buy. Now, I'd recommend if you're going to buy any desktop PC, then a Core i3 processor should be enough. Core i5 for gaming, a Core i7 for anything more than that. That said, if you wanted to get a budget processor, you could. We'll have another episode on processors coming up soon. But for now, let's get on with this build. So, we've picked our list of components that we want, and there could be changes along the way, unless you're going to buy it all in one here. Sometimes better to review and read other people's reviews on it and maybe watch a few videos to see what they think of the bits before you actually buy them. Is the case going to house everything you want? The case we've picked will support up to a 40 centimetre graphics card. Great because we're going to buy one that's 30 centimetres long. But if you buy a case half that size you're probably not going to fit it in there. So there's things you might want to consider. The next thing we do once we've chosen all our components is run it through another website which you can see the details for here end up off on the screen in a second for you. Um, and this basically does a power calculation. So you tell it all the components that's going into the computer, then it will tell you what sort of um, power supply you'll need for that computer to run. Bear in mind that you might want to expand and put things into the, into the case in the future. Right, and welcome to our gaming PC build for 2016. So we've got the uh, NZXT um, H440 Black Edition case, uh, and here we have the RM750i Corsair power supply. Um, we decided to go with the 750 because it should be more than enough, even if we do decide to run SLI graphics cards at a later date. However, the plan at this time being is only to one, run one graphics card. We're just installing the plate here that attaches to the hard drive, so then we can slot it into the back of the case. comes with the uh, standard four screw mount uh, 
that most power supplies come with these days, in fact there are only that don't. Um, this one you attach the plate first and then you slide it in and then that attaches with thumb screws um, which we'll show you in a minute. The power supply housing on this case is purely independent air system from the rest of the case in the respect that uh, it won't draw air out the system. It draws from underneath through a filter and then out the back therefore added no more potential heat to the case. So it neatly slides in there like that and then we just tighten up these thumb screws here which we're then going to tighten with a screwdriver just to make sure. So we're just going to tighten these up with a screwdriver um, just so no one can undo them and play around with them. We're going to need a screwdriver to undo them again. As you can see here the power supply sits uh, neatly inside the back of the case there and giving you access to the port. So I like to make all the cables neat for the case, so we're just going to tidy up some cables a bit before we start installing components. Uh, the first component we're going to install is the Hue Plus lighting system from NZXT. Um, this has comes with four strips of RGB LED lights that we can control the colour with on the software in Windows. Um, we're just going to install the Hue controller to one of the hard drive mounts and then route the wires through the case and we'll show you what that looks like when it's all lit up and done. So it's quite important for the airflow and uh, aesthetics of the case to get the, uh, the cables nice and neat and tidy and it makes life easier when you're trying to do other bits. So install the unit at the top here and we'll just show you a quick look at the lighting strips while they're on and they're mounted at the front of the case and at the top of the case and we haven't installed windows yet as you could probably tell by the fact there's no motherboard so we can't show you any more than that. We're going to also install the NZXT USB controller because there's not enough headers on the motherboard for that and the other bits we're going to install. This comes with three headers so we're going to install this as well as an extra. It also comes with two standard USB ports on the top so hopefully that will give us the ability uh, to connect everything up and we will arrange those cables a little neater later on. So for the motherboard we've chosen the Asus Maximus 8 Hero motherboard. Uh, this came with everything we required, um, everything we wanted from the board and come up with some really good reviews. So we're going to uh, speed this up a bit, the install of this. Um, first of all obviously we're going to install the back plates here. Um, the case incidentally comes with IO lighting so that would be useful when we're changing things later on. Then we can see what we're doing. A feature the cases should have come with absolutely ages ago, but um, it seems to only just caught on as an idea uh, when the gaming cases came around. So if you haven't installed a motherboard before, then have a look at some videos. But it's very really straightforward. Once you've got the IO shield in, it clips into place, and then you just attach the screws where there are screw holes. Uh, and then you're pretty much done. It's just a case then of arranging the leads to connect it up with and then uh, powering the device up. Obviously installing your, your memory etc. So I've had a couple of plays here as you can see from this uh, sped up video of where we're going to mount that, that power lead and I'm still not quite sure but we went with an option that doesn't go through those grommets and that's because the, the lead goes straight onto the top of the board rather than an angle so it becomes a bit awkward. Um, but nevertheless, the rest of the cables are really easy to manage through this case and we seem to be getting quite a neat finish. Quite looking forward to the finished result from that. So I noticed on the motherboard we had a uh, thermometer sensor plug on it, so I had one spare in the uh, old box as it were, and I've just rooted this round the fan and it's going to tuck up at the back there. So next we're going to quickly unwrap, <laughs> very quickly unwrap, the... Um, H110GT um, and install this on the top of the case. I have to say this is very fiddly, I wanted the fans in a pull configuration and it was extremely fiddly to uh, to align the screws up etc etc. Probably would have been easier if I'd done this before I just installed the motherboard and everything else but it's already done, I wasn't going to undo it. So once we got it, um, uh, got it aligned and in, I then went back and put all the washers on. It seemed easier to hold it in place as you can see this is the short version of me messing around with the top of it here. It took some doing. So um, we then took the, uh, the screws back out, put a washer on, um, and then screwed it back up. 
I have to say with the, with the uh, the piping seemed quite stiff to re to arrange. Probably would, like I say would have been easier. Um, I had to take out one of the drive bays at the front, um, and I also had a rethought on one of the drive bays at the front, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute. So we'll just get the last of these washers on, and hopefully this will keep our system nice and cool. Um, if nothing else, it uh, it looks good. <laughs> We also tested the airflow at the top of this, and I have to say, it really does kick out the top, um, even with the lid on, so I have no issues there at all. Just a quick noise test. Unfortunately, there was a, an old Vauxhall Nova out in the front there that was making an awful racket while I was recording this, so I won't worry about playing it too much. You see if it's nasty at the top there, just see the Corsair logo. There's the rethink on the uh, drive bay there. I've actually just flipped that around. As the wires were pushing hard against the side of the case, so it seemed easy to turn it round and route the cables round that way. And then just a quick overview of the uh, cable neat, and this is pretty much all the cables in now. So there's the back view, all nice and neat and ready to go. Incidentally, here you'll see a white cable there. We uh, played around with the cable for the motherboard on a few occasions, couldn't quite get it right, so decided to buy a white cable that's more flexible in, to put in place which is so much easier and improved the look of the case. Of course, then we had to do the same thing for the graphics card and bought two white cables to power that. So we're just going to install the memory here. Um, we're just going to show you two modules quickly. If you haven't installed memory before, it's probably best if the PC's led its back, so it's, uh, you're pulling it straight down. But we've done this a few times before, so we felt quite confident with just slotting in. As you can see, at the bottom here, there's just a, a slot for it to go in, and the top is a clip. And then when you push down, it locks in place in both parts. Simple, you'll hear it click in place. Um, the memory does need a lining. There's a notch halfway down the memory, approximately, uh, and there'll be a notch on the motherboard slot, about the same. Once you've got the first one in, it's easy recommended it. They're all going to go in the same way, and it's nice and easy to do. So the M.2 drive just slots into the slot on the motherboard. And you'll see on most modern motherboards a sender uh, screw places for you to tighten it up and just make sure it's nice and secure and held in there. And then well, on this computer we're going to use that to be the uh, the main boot drive for it. We decided after running this computer for a bit the stock fan that was at the back of the case wasn't up to scratch. So we built this uh, Alaska Viper um, fan which had a capacity I think of 110 cubic feet per meter that uh, popped through. So we decided to go for that and I have to say it's made a hell of a difference in the back of the case there. Considering getting another two of these for the front as we're running three 120mm fans. But let's have a look at further down the road. So a quick noise test of all the fans inside this computer and this is running at full. And then this is it, the full gaming build of uh, 2016. So like this video if you like it, subscribe to see more, and hit us up on the website for any more details and information, and including all the components built in this computer.